I see Valter has changed some aspects of the interface, especially when deploying your server. In this video, I'm going to do a Valtra tutorial and you're going to see how you can deploy a server using the new interface. So if you're following along on Windows, we are going to need to log in. You'll need to log in using Git Bash. You can download Git Bash. You can download Git and open Git Bash and you'll follow along with that if you want to log into your server. If you're on a Mac, Linux, you can still follow along with the terminal that comes with your computer. So to deploy a new server, let's see how we can do that. You can just click there on deploy and click on deploy new server. Let's say I want to deploy a VPS running Debian in Europe, in some location in Germany. Let's see how we can do that. So there are different types of servers that Valtra, that Valtra provides. They're dedicated CPU servers. These are VPSs that don't share the resources. Then they are cloud GPUs. These have GPUs attached and you can get a slice of the GPU. And then there are shared CPU. Shared CPUs are the ones that are mostly used. These are the common VPSs. And then there is bare metal. This is a dedicated server. So the first thing you choose the type of server you want and we can go with shared CPU. This is okay for running websites. If you want to run WordPress, you want to run a mail server, you can use the shared CPUs. And then for the location, you have to choose where your server will be located. I will go with Europe and I will choose Frankfurt in Germany. And then you choose the type of server that you want for the shared CPU VPSs. You can also have the cloud compute. These are the older generation. If you want to run a mail server, you can run that with any of this. It's not a problem, but if you want to run a website, maybe DB server, you can choose either high frequency or high performance. Both of them, I think, have the same pricing, but for the high performance, you can decide whether you want AMD or Intel. For me, I'm going to choose AMD, high performance. And here you can choose what you want. I'm going to go with one virtual CPU and two GB RAM, that is $12 a month, but you can see it's 14 on this side and you're going to see why that is. So we've chosen the type of server we want, where we want it and the actual server that we want. So I'm going to click configure software and then here we can choose the operating system. As I've said, I want a Debian. I want a Debian server, so I'm going to go with Debian 12. You can also install various applications from the marketplace and start from there. Maybe you want cPanel, you want Plesk, CyberPanel, all this. Just click to see the options that you have. You can also upload your own ISO. So when you click upload, you can load, upload it somewhere and add the link. And then there's also an ISO library. So the ISO library, perhaps you want to use Gparted on your server, you can install it right there. Instead of uploading it, Gparted is already there, you can use it. If you have a backup of a previous server, you can use that to set up a new server. And the same is true for a snapshot. You can, you can create a snapshot and then use that to set up a new server on this one. So for the operating system, we're going to go with Debian and I'm going to go with Debian 12. Windows is also supported. You can choose the right version of Windows that you want to use on your Valter server. Now server settings, you can set up SSH keys and usually I recommend you set up SSH keys, but I'm just going to leave that blank and we'll log in with a password. If you want to see a video for setting up SSH keys and just allowing it on Valtra so that you can select it from here, I'll put a link in the description below. And then startup script, you can add a startup script, a firewall group as well. If you already have a firewall set up, you can select your firewall from there and use it to protect your server. Server host name, you can give the server a host name. Let me give it a host name of. So if I give it this host name, which is a fully qualified domain name, it's going to actually add this as the host name for my server. And I won't have to change this manually in my server. So if you have a fully qualified domain name, use it there as a server host name. And then automatic backups automatic backups are charged at 20% of the server price. So that's why you can see this is $14, even though my server is $12. So if I was to disable that, you'll see my pricing goes back to 12. And then public IP, that is free. And then of course, you may want an IPv6 as well. You may want to enable network, the 
virtual private networks maybe you're creating a uh, database clusters you want them to talk to each other in a private network you can set up vpc on valter and then if you want ddos protection that's ten dollars a month you can create a user but i leave this unchecked and we can log in with the root user you can enter your cloud in it your cloud in it right there and that will be used to set up your server if you want to change anything you can go back if you want to deploy go ahead and deploy right now valter servers valter servers are usually charged per hour so if you need a server that you can use for a few hours you can deploy a valter server and use it or if you want a production server it is charged per hour and if you're using it per month you will get your invoice and that will come to the monthly price of the server let's see how to log into our server so if I click on the server that I've just deployed, you'll see that down here, the username will be shown to you and you can also copy the password for the root user. So the first thing, open up Git bash if you're on Windows. If you're on Mac, Linux, open up your terminal. And let's see how to log into our server. So I'm going to do SSH. The user is root at the IP, control shift V to paste on Linux, on git bash, shift insert to paste, and then enter if the server is ready, we'll know if it is not ready, we'll just give it a few more minutes for it to complete. So it seems it's not ready. If you come here, you're going to see, they even tell you, let's come to that. They tell you that your server may still be installing. So let's see. Okay, seems like it's not ready. I'm just going to do control C. Then try again. This means that the server is still installing. So let's just give it a few more minutes. Like two minutes should be enough. Right now it's ready. If you see this, it means that the server is ready and you can log in. So type yes, yes, enter, and then let's copy the password from here. The password is there. Control Shift V, enter. So when you paste the password, it won't be shown. Just press enter. Control L to clear the screen and now you can update your server. You can update the server by doing sudo apt update sudo apt upgrade dash y there we go the server is now updated and that's how to deploy a new server in Valtra and log into it. Now let's see how we can manage it Maybe you want to see what else you can do with your virtual machine. So there you go. Once you're here on your virtual machine, there's an overview of everything. You can see how much it has incurred currently. And this depends on how long the machine has been running. So usage graphs, if you've used, if you have used the machine for a while, you can come in here. The usage graph for the different metrics and settings. Your IPv4 is there. You can set up your reverse DNS right there. For example, if you want to set up the reverse DNS on your server, you can come in here. Maybe you want the reverse DNS to match this. And I will do a tutorial for how to create a mail server using HTTP. And you'll see this is one of the places I will come to. So you can do a reverse DNS change, add your host name there. So it is reflected as your reverse DNS. When people do a reverse DNS check, on your IP. IPv6 as well, you can find your address there. And then VPC, if you want to enable VPC, you can enable a virtual private cloud network. And this can allow your different virtual machines to talk to each other and use the private VPC. Firewall, you can set up a firewall create a firewall, add the rules, maybe you want to allow port 2020, allow certain ports, and then attach this to the virtual machine. If you need a tutorial for this, let me know. If you need a tutorial for anything, just let me know. 
custom ISO. So here you can attach ISO and reboot. So if you upload your ISO, you can go there, upload an ISO and then attach one of your ISOs and then reboot your server and you can install whichever ISO it is you've attached to the virtual machine. And then you can change your server host name right there or you can also do this in your virtual machine. Change plan. If you want to upgrade, you can upgrade your server right there. Maybe you want to go from one virtual CPU to two, you can go there and it will show you the price for that per month. Change OS, you can. Right now we're using Debian 12. Maybe you realize whatever you want to run doesn't run on Debian. So you decide, let me change the operating system to Ubuntu 22.04. You can select that and click on change OS and it's going to change your OS. You can reinstall SSH keys. This is also going to wipe all the data on your server. Let's move on to snapshots. You can create a snapshot. You can take a snapshot of this server. You can use that snapshot to start other servers and backup. You can enable backup. If you have backups, you can restore your backups right here. And you can also change the backup schedule. All the settings are there. You can disable automatic backups if you don't need it for this particular server. And then user data. If you want to do anything with cloud init, you can add your cloud init user data right there. Tags, you can tag a virtual machine. Maybe you want, you want it to be tagged as dev. You can do that. DDoS, you can enable DDoS protection at $10 per month per server. That pretty much covers that. All these other items, you can click on them to see what they do. I have a tutorial for Kubernetes. If you want to watch that, go and watch it. A uh, Valtra Kubernetes setup tutorial. I'll put the link in the description. All these other items, you can just click on them to see what you can do with them, deploy them and practice. The good thing with Valtra is that everything is charged hourly, except for Windows licenses. So this will reinstall the server if you want to go to Ubuntu or you want to go to CentOS, click there, reinstall. You want to restart your server, you can come into your Valtra dashboard and restart. You can stop the server. If you stop the server, you'll still get charged for that server. So if you don't want to be charged, you can just destroy a server you no longer need. Yes, destroy the server. Destroy. You can see it is destroying this one as well. I can come to this side and click on server destroy. Yes, destroy, destroy the server. All right, that covers the end of this tutorial. In the description, there are there's an option for you to get 300. If you're new to Valtra, you can get $300 free credit in the description below.